Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and the second part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if a non-league team had a billion pounds. Now at the end of the last episode we had gone 10 years into the future. You can see here uh, they'd gone from 16th place in the Vanarama National League North, a little bit of mid-table, then won the league in 24-25, a nice consolidation in the playoff positions followed by promotion into the football league and survival from relegation the year after that so they've managed to progress up two promotions but two promotions every 10 years and it getting progressively harder as you go up due to financial fair play means that this could become a very long experiment so what we're going to do today is only a minor tweak to begin with but there might be another one to come First off, we're going to change the sugar daddy to a front end sugar daddy. That should maintain a steady flow of income being pumped into the club in a way that I think might be a little bit more financially sustainable. I'm not going to give them any more cash as it is uh, because they're not burning through this particularly quickly. It's about two million a year. It's going down. Uh, the initial big chunk was taken by tax the very first year. And since then, it's been a pretty consistent level. So I'm not worried about that money running out. Now the other thing that we could change, and which I might even change in this episode, depending on how we go going forward, is the reputation. We could take this up to the level of 10,000, which would allow them to bring in the best players, managers, and everything else in the game. So if in 10 years time they are still not progressing, we will just bump up the reputation in a way that I think is the same as if a club actually did have a billion pounds. So you think of any club which has got a huge amount of financial bankroll behind it, players want to play for them because they know even if it's not today, but in two, three, four years' time, they're going to have a huge amount of money. So I think the reputation of these clubs does actually boost immediately as soon as you put the money in. But for now, we're going to see if we can raise it naturally over the next 10 years. Hopefully, they'll climb further up the football pyramid, get into the Premier League, Premier League really start to turbocharge that spending, and we can get into a much better place for the rest of this series. I think there's probably only going to be one more part to this experiment. So do drop a like down below if you would like to see a third and probably final part. And make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. I think only 20% of people watching these videos are actually subscribed. So, you know, help the channel grow by hitting that subscribe button down below. And let me know in the comments if there's anything you would like to see in the final episode of this series. But let's go forward 10 years into the future with Bly Spartans and see how they're getting on. Well, we are now 10 years into the future. We're going to very quickly run through 10 years worth of results. And as you can see, the very first season after we left off did not go well. Uh, one victory in their first three months coming against Peterborough um, before beating Lincoln 3-1 as well but a huge number of defeats in all competitions. They must have sacked a manager around here because their form does begin to pick up. They start to do well from the end of February, and I think they just about survive relegation, as you can see. They're still in the league football the following year. It's a much better start this time, but quickly goes off the rails in October. They try to recover through the next few months. It's a little bit more patchy, a lot of defeats here, followed by another patchy run of form but they do manage to make it through um, and then in the next season again still plugging their way in the bottom half of league two getting a little bit more consistent now having a go at the leasing.com trophy uh, do get knocked out in the second round of that out in the third round of the fa cup big game away against crystal palace that will well ordinarily do well for the gate receipts not that they need the money um, but their league campaign, a much better run. Not making it into the playoffs, though, but they're continuing to build year after year. It's just, I mean, you're not really seeing that money shine through in the team at all. And that continues into the next season where there's more slogging away, a good run of form here. Keep going in the FA Cup, through against Gateshead in the replay, into the third round again where they're beaten by Huddersfield, 3-2 away. A very good fight, that match there. Um, they did manage to get into the third round of the Leasing.com trophy, but lost to Oldham in that one. But a good run in the league uh, until the end of the year, where it all falls apart yet again. Um, and the year after that, a much, much better start 
uh, and they continue it right the way through, even doing well in the FA Cup, getting to the third round and then beating Stevenage 3-2. Also make it through to the quarterfinals of the Leasing.com Trophy before beating, being beaten by the United Under-23s. Uh, their FA Cup campaign ended by Norwich 4-0 in the fourth round, but some good cup runs in there. And they were doing well in the league as well. A lot of defeats here, followed by a lot of draws, didn't help. Uh, and despite some beaten run to the end of the season, they did not manage to get promoted or into the playoffs. So you can see we're already up to 2035 now. We're halfway through those, this decade and they are still slogging it out in League 2. And it's not that much of a better campaign the year after either. It's a very, very strong finish, which does just about sneak them into the playoffs. I mean, that is a fantastic run of form to make a late push to the playoffs. One defeat in there. Three draws, excellent result. They take on AFC Wimbledon. It's a one-all draw. Scott Dunn getting the equaliser. But they then win 2-0 at home at Croft Park, beating Wimbledon to make the final at Wembley. I think it's their first ever appearance at Wembley. And it's a 2-1 defeat to Hartlepool. Unfortunate in front of 52,000 fans, but they did not get promoted. So another season in League 2. Another real struggle through the season. Uh, but a good finish still doesn't get them up. And again, this time around, two years away from now, they are still doing very well in League 2 this time. A huge number of victories, an incredible run of unbeaten form here. Luck still keeps going until they lose to Cheltenham in April. So that's the end of the year through till April that they are unbeaten. And with form like that, they do manage to get promoted. Finally, eight years later to Sky Bet League 1. It's actually nine years they were in League 2. Uh, and in League 1, they actually do quite well. They've got quite a good run of form here. Lots and lots of wins. You can imagine a manager's been sacked. A lot of money has been spent. And they do turn on the absolute turbo charge, even going through in the FA Cup to the third round, beating Swansea 2-1 there before being beaten by Stoke 2-0 at Croft Park. Um, and then it all comes crashing to a bad finish here. Uh, a lot of defeats, they don't do too well at the end of the season and they have to stay in mid-table. And in the most recent season, you can see very inconsistent form once more. They continue to get some wins, a good finish to the season, but it's not enough. And if we just have a look at this league table for them, you can see that they have finished up down in 13th place. Uh, it's not too far off the playoff positions, but it's just not quite enough really. The year before that, 14th place, and the year before that, uh, they were in League 2. And if we just have a quick look um, at, if we can get that to actually work, there we go. If we just have a look at the table for League 2 going back three years, we can see they did finish as champions in that season. So every time they've been promoted, they have finished as champions. Four points clear that time, uh, well clear of the playoffs, 15th the year before that. But then this was the season they made it to Wembley, missing out. On second and third place, only just there. Two points in it. They could have advanced even quicker. The year before that, down in eighth place. And then fighting relegation before that. Mid-table, all the time before that. Only survived by one point that year. That was the year they had that dreadful start with one win in about three or four months. Uh, Twelfth the year before that. Twentieth. You could just see that was the year they got promoted. So it's been a little bit of a slog, it has to be said. Uh, you can see they. this is when they got promoted. This is where we left off. It's just been bouncing around the league positions until they did win the league, going from 15th to 1st, and then they finished 14th. Currently managed by uh, Katroviak, uh, who you may remember from Premier League times a few years ago. Uh, and if we just have a look at those managers, actually, you can see Katroviak, not the man who got them promoted. That was Brendan Maloney, who did manage to win their Skybet League 2 trophy. Two and a bit years he had at the club. But most managers barely making it to the one-year point before being given the can. Nobody making it to the two-year point until Brendan Maloney, who won the league. Before that, it was Dean Wright who got two consecutive titles. Um, it wasn't consecutive, um, but two titles for the team in his three years in, in charge. So maybe Kotroviak can do a little bit better than those that have gone before him. He's certainly a bigger name. But you can see they're still reasonably wealthy i did have to keep putting the sugar daddy back in there through these 10 years and even now they don't have the sugar daddy because the game just they're constantly winding down the funding 
But despite not giving them any more cash, they still have three hundred and forty-one million pounds. They're just not allowed to spend the money, and it's really frustrating that they're not spending this money. If we have a look at the transfer history here, you can see there have been seasons where they've spent a little bit of cash. If we go back to where we left off, they were under embargo. It wasn't brilliant. But then they managed to spend 100 grand, 275, nothing, nothing, 750. And then the taps are turned on 13 million pounds spent, followed by what I think is probably some sort of embargo um, or restriction, 5 million pounds, 5 million pounds, and then 14.5 million pounds in the most recent season. Bear in mind they've been promoted here. Um, so that has allowed them to do well. Maybe it was the final at Wembley that allowed them to go on a big spending spree. I don't know what it was, but something led to the tax being turned on. They built a stronger team and they have finally made it into League One. But that was a 10 year slog to get to this point and they just cannot spend the money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the editor. We're going to give them probably a sugar daddy again, but we're also going to bump this reputation up to 10,000. It's already about halfway there. It's gone up by about 2,500. But that is what we're fighting against at the moment is this reputation point. Because even if they can't um, spend too much money, the fact they're bringing in better players, they'll be able to attract people on free uh, agents, will be able to get better managers, better staff, probably lead to a much bigger stadium, facilities, Everything will follow that change. That's my theory. So what we're going to do now, rather than linger on anything else, we're going to jump forward five more years and see the impact that a boost in reputation has on this team. Well, we are now five years further into the future. We will do the little run through their league season so you can see what they got up to. And immediately there are a lot more victories on this screen. A 6-0 crushing of Bradford down here as well. Um, and... A little wobble as they also get knocked out the FA Cup third round. But then very consistent victories through the season. They make the playoffs yet again. A one all draw with Crawley at home followed by a 2-1 defeat away from home despite having the lead in the first minute. Then it was another year down in League One. But as you can see, the reputation already kicking into the team. An enormous unbeaten streak with just one game dropped. Uh, before losing to Sheffield United, but it carried on going a 5-1 win over the Leeds under-23s. Knocked out by Leicester in the Carabao Cup, but they keep going uh, on this fantastic run, including against Wigan in the Leasing.com Trophy second round. Uh, through in the FA Cup third round with a 2-0 win away from home at West Ham. That's how good they've become. Look at this lovely streak of wins. This is what you expect to see when a team is given a billion pounds. And they also make it into the leasing.com final, beating Derby 3-1. Beaten by Newcastle in the FA Cup fifth round, but their league form absolutely imperious. They win their first proper cup competition. 2-1 over Plymouth for leasing.com trophy final in front of 46,000 fans at Wembley. A successful return there and a clear victory of the league title in League One. That is how quickly things turned around. And you can see it continues the following year as they make it into the championship. Another unbeaten start to a promotion season. Lost to Brighton, but kept going even in the Carabao Cup. Nice 2-0 win. Lost to Chelsea in the quarterfinals there. A 3-1 defeat against 10 men for the most part. Um, but the run keeps going. They lose to Man City 3-1 in the FA Cup fourth round, despite beating Preston in the third round. Uh, and then a strong season to their championship season means they get promoted to the Premier League. It happens so quickly with reputation on your side. And you can see here, good start. 2-1 victory over Wolves in their first season in the top flight. Uh, they did lose to Arsenal, Burnley, United in here as well. Out of the Carabao Cup to West Brom. Just looking for any giant killings that might pop up. Nothing at the moment. A bit of a rough patch of form. Still going in the FA Cup though. A nice run of victories here. Uh, beating Birmingham in the fourth round. And then losing to Wolves in the fifth. Uh, well, they did beat Spurs 2-0 at home as well. Probably the biggest victory um, or biggest team they've beaten in their history. Managed to beat Everton 3-2. Um, and then at the end of the season, three defeats to finish it off. But they did manage to stay in the Premier League for another year. 
Uh, and you can see a good start to the season this time around. They beat Chelsea 1-0 at home. Beat United 2-1 at home. A very good season for them. Arsenal beating 2-1 at home. That's a nice little consistent run of victories. Um, through in the FA Cup as well. Beat Spurs 2-1 at home. And then a little tough end to the season but they did also beat Chelsea 2-1 at Stamford Bridge and that brings us to where we are now but look at that lovely little spike up that's what we wanted to see we wanted to see them in the big time and all it took was the boost in reputation they will have spent an awful lot of money uh, achieving this result but it did happen very very quickly two consecutive promotions getting them into the Premier League and they stayed there as well if we just have a look at the Premier League table uh, then you can see they are currently in ninth place, the top half of the league. They're not far from breaking into Europe. Very tight finish to the season. Imagine that final day. Um, the year before that, they finished down in 13th, but they weren't particularly endangered. 10 points clear of Everton, who got relegated. And the year before that, if we drop down to the Championship and just have a look at that league table, they didn't manage to win the title, but three points behind Reading. Um, and reasonably clear of West Ham, who were further down. And then in League One, that season they got promoted, they won with 108 points. Absolutely demolished the table. Uh, they weren't too far off automatic promotion the year before that with 79, but a big improvement on the 13th place they had before. So a very nice finish to their season. If we look at this transfer history, huge spikes appear. So when we left off, they just started to open up the tap, so it was £17.75 million spent. That became £34 million, £27 million on Simon Blake from West Ham, who's now at Reading. Uh, signed for £27 million, sold for £4 million. Probably not a sign of a great investment, uh, but he was their marquee signing, club record signing. But then £143 million was spent on players. Uh, what season is this? The so 41. I think this is when they got into the championship and then got promoted. They didn't break their club record, but Juan Espinosa, now also no longer at the team, signed for 26, lost for 13. Uh, they are not paying or making a big profit out of these transfers. Marcel Newman in there from Fulham, still at the club though at least. That's a good sign, but not necessarily performing that well. Uh, but not too much money going out either. And then the following year, first season in the Premier League, £160 million spent. These are the figures we're used to seeing. £72 million out the door. Club record signing at this point, Davide Brambia from Southampton. Uh, currently worth £33 million. Still at the club. Still doing reasonably well. Defensive midfielder. Quite a lot of money for a defensive midfielder. Uh, and Maxence Perrier from Liverpool. Now worth £68 million on the right wing. Beautiful statistics across the board. Uh, and he is really absolutely paying for himself. That first season in the Championship did a brilliant job. Uh, and he is still going as a great player at their team. Um, now if we have a look... At the overview of the club, you can see their current manager is Valerian Ishmael. I just want to see what his uh, career history looks like. I mean, he spent a lot of money. He has won a few cups, a few leagues. Um, it's hard to see their list of managerial stats. That's the problem. Uh, if we look at milestones, maybe. And then competitions. What competitions did he won? So he's in charge of France where they won the European International League, and then he joined by Spartans. Brescia Dortmund, he won with Liverpool quite a few times, winning the Champions League with Liverpool. So we have a Liverpool Champions League winning manager at the club. He seems to have been there for quite some time, winning quite a lot of different trophies. He was at Porto for a while as well. So they've got a real high-quality manager in charge of the team now. And just looking um, at their history of managers he's been in charge for one year and 159 days uh, Kotroviak did manage to get that league title managed to break that two year boundary get into three years five days short of becoming the first man uh, since Lee Clark to do four years uh, but Ishmael now been there for a year looking for her his first trophy with the club um, what I will do now is just make myself manager so we can have a proper look at their finances um, if I can get this to work and that will just allow us to see the inner workings of 
the team. There we go. I'm going to have to skip through all these screens again. And then if we just click on this finances page, they got 530 million. I did give them a huge boost in cash. Uh, this was when it happened. It was just after we'd gone forward a little bit. I decided to give them that big bump in addition to the reputation. But you can see they spent it pretty quickly, getting down to 2042. Um, and I don't remember doing this. I don't think I did do this. I wonder if they got a new owner come in or something. Maybe I did do it. I'm not... No, I definitely didn't do that. Somebody else has done that. Maybe I, it was a sugar daddy who gave them a big pump of cash. But they got as high as 939 million. That's 140 million they made month to month there. And now it's been rocking down ever since. Uh, but if we look at that income, remember we were talking about 50,000s or so. They got 595 million from sponsorship. Now, I have not done that. That was not me last season. I don't know what that is. That looks like financial fair play will be sniffing all around that because that was not me. So, that is a huge amount of money 112 million from TV revenue. Uh, Players sold. It must just be the reputation of the club being so huge. That must be a new kit deal. That's a reputation coming into play. That's a benefit it brings. You almost don't need to give them the money anymore. Reputation is so powerful in this game. Um, and then you can see gate receipts down at 7 million, dwarfed by everything else. Expenditure though, huge transfers, and then player wages, 320 million between the two. That's why they're running down uh, the finances so much. And you can see their projection here, profit and loss not looking like it's gonna be very healthy for very long. Um, but everything else looks like a very confident straight line. They do have 30 million of transfer debt, but nothing else going on in the club. And a quick look at their squad. They do have some fantastic players. Uh, Pruard here, the Belgian, signed from Man City for 91 million pounds. Um, I can't remember if I looked at the most recent season here. If we just have a quick look. No, I didn't. So in the most recent season, 76 million pounds spent. So even that one hasn't quite popped up on the board yet. Uh, Maxon's Perrier we already looked at. They've got a good few youngsters in here as well. He was signed from Inter for just £98,000, which looks like an absolute steal. Um, this guy, where was he picked up from? He picked up from Milan for about £40 million. But they're doing well getting good young players in, which should give them a really good stab at the future. Uh, now, just having a look at their facilities, they're currently at the Port Vale Stadium with a capacity of 12,000 on each side. Training facilities up at 20. This is, what, again, what I said would happen. 19 on youth facilities. So they've got under soil heating. Uh, I'll just have a look at the club info screen and then general information to see if it says where their stadium is. Um, doesn't say that. It'll be here. Port Vale Stadium, due to move back to the 23,875 capacity Blythe Stadium on the 26th of June 2046. So they are currently uh, staying at Port Vale Stadium, but they will be moving back to Blythe Stadium in not too long. So Blythe Spartans doing extremely well at the moment. The question is, can they win the Premier League? Can they win the Champions League? I am not going to put any more money into the club from this date. We are gonna leave them alone and let's see how they get on going forward. So if you have enjoyed this part of this experiment, drop a like on the video, make sure to subscribe for the next part, which will be out tomorrow. That will go right to the end of this experiment. We'll probably go 20, 30 years into the future to see how much silverware they can win without any more cash being put into the club. Uh, not by me anyway, I mean, somebody else is doing this. This is just sponsorship money coming in. It's a huge amount of money. Um, but until next time, see ya.